Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is another video kind of covering my adventures in learning playing with Remix. I've done, this is a link in my YouTube, to my YouTube channel to a playlist I have on Remix. I've done a video on creating an, authentic, uh, uh, on creating an authentication flow with Remix and Superbase. Um, and I also did another one where I kind of combined this functionality to my existing application where I show how to upload files to Superbase storage buckets and also to save data to Superbase using um, Remix. And then this last video, which is what you're here for today, is I'm showing how to integrate um, validation, form validation into a simple Remix application. And I'm leveraging a library that I've used in the past. Um, I normally use, Re, what was it called, uh, React Hook Form. And when I use React Hook Form, I use uh, Yup as my validation or validator, or res I think they call it a resolver. Um, and so here it is, um, not that one, that's not very helpful. Um, but uh, this Yup library, which you can download from NPM, which you can use for form validation, I like it because you kind of lay out a schema, kind of defined and kind of define what the values are, what you expect them to be. This wraps all the validation for you. It also allows you to find error message. And there's a way to kind of call these functions on this data when it gets passed in um, to Remix and get a nice set of error messages back and appropriately update your UI to support it. And so that's kind of what we're going to cover in this video. I'm, I'm kind of getting lazy with this kind of typing stuff. So once again, this is going to be a video where I kind of walk through some existing code that I've written that kind of demonstrates this. I'm trying to follow the approach that was suggested in a uh, stream that I watched last week where I'm going to just try to cover one specific topic at a time. So I'm not saving to a database. I'm not doing anything magical like that. I'm just showing how to implement form validation in a page. So that's what you get in this video. So if you it's something that you think you're going to enjoy, please stick around and watch it. Otherwise, please make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. Um, all the subscribers and all the likes help and kind of spread the news. So let's kind of shrink my head and get to the code. Let's go over to this side today. All right. So um, for those who don't know, let's hop to the remix link https.remixrun they have a section in here on form validation which is kind of what I based my code on let's see if I can get to this read the docs um, where did I see this let's just do forms building a form start to finish and let me kind of zoom in zoom this in a bit I actually leveraged their form for the bulk, bulk of my project. Um, and here they cover form validation. And the basic concept is that you can validate the forms and then if there's errors, you can pass the errors back and you pick up the errors back inside your document in the action data that comes back. And then based on the action data that comes back, um, you can kind of update the UI to show the error information. Um, they don't use a package, a third party package here. So that's kind of my little addition that I've added. So let's kind of shrink this back over to the side. Also all the links I'm referencing will be included. And where is my app? Is this my app? Okay, so this is my app. Um, I to Just to let you know, to get the app started, I really just did the normal initialization. This is a basic application with the default index, and I added a couple of pages to it um, to support the work that I'm doing. So here we are in my uh, index page. Let me zoom this in a bit. Okay, here we are on my index page. Nothing magic here. Here's my loader. I'm not really loading any data. I was going to add a database, but I tried, I'm, I'm really trying to keep this simple. I have a basic uh, button with a link wrapped around it, and the link takes me to my new item page. Um, because of the router, because of the way they do the page-based routing, this means I just have a, let's go to my routes. If I look in my routes, I have this, um, so index is where we are now. New item is the next page that we're going to go to when I click the link. So right here, my link to new item and on my submit. So let's, hmm, that didn't need to be submit, but let's see. So as I click add item, it takes me to my new form. 
And this is my form page. It has my three fields, name, email, description, and the create and cancel. Just so that you know, cancel takes me back to the home page. And create is what's going to happen when I attempt to submit the form. And just to kind of give you a sneak preview, here when I click create, you can see I'm getting um, some information back. Uh, I guess I do need to move myself over this side. Um, so I'm getting this name value pair with a key for each one of the fields, name, email, description, and an error field that I've kind of created myself, which I'll show you. And then on success, so if I actually enter some data in here, first if I enter just two fields and I click create, it kind of cleans that up and only gives me an error message for the last one. And then this, this is the description. And then when I click create, it creates a new uh, file, uh, object and it takes me to a success page with additional information to indicate that a um, object was created and we know it was successful. And then home just moved me back again. All right, so now let's walk through what's going on in my new item page since that's kind of the bulk of everything. So let's start, and I'll move myself back over here again. Let's kind of start with the simple stuff. So this is the name of my function. Um, this is my action data. Data returned after submit sub submitting the form. And in this case, the data that's gonna come back in the action data that I'm most concerned with is just errors. This is my initial, I mean, this is just a default header. Um, as you can see down here, then I have this form. This is uh, this is the uh, bah, 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 the remix form. So it's been imported up here at the top, and then I kind of have my fields. So I have my name field. Let's go to the page. My name field, my email field, description, simple HTML, label, input label, input email, label, input description. And then I have two buttons. I have my submit button for the create. And then I have my cancel button with the link to action and sending me back to my home page. Um, and then at the bottom here, I'll cover this when we actually get the errors. I'm just rendering out the errors that get returned as part of my action errors. So the next step is um, just so that you notice, the important thing here is that my fields have the name that's associated with them. This name key is the key that's going to be used in returning the results on the validation. So as I enter data, my data is captured in my form. So let's just go here and so enter some data. And then when I click submit, it's going to call my action function. And then in my action function, I can call this uh, request form data, which gets me my form data. And then now we kind of get to the yup stuff, yup stuff where I need to validate the form. So I've created this function called validate form. I'm passing in my form data object, and now let's go see what's happening up in my validate form. Let's kind of put a little something here to kind of separate this so I can see what's going on. And here's my validate form function. I pass in my form data. Kind of have a helper function inside of here to kind of extract out the errors. We'll cover that later, but. Um, the first thing I need to do is I need to convert the form data into a, a plain JSON object with a key value pair. So what I'm trying to get out of this is an object that has, that basically will say name and then the value from name, email, the value from email, description, the value from description. And that's the object that I'm going to validate, all right? The next thing for, from an order perspective, I probably should have put the schema on top. But what this is, this is the schema that I've defined using kind of Yup's definition language on the fields and what my expectations are on them. So this is my name field. Uh, it's a type string. It's required. Here's the message that I want to throw if um, the validation fails. Um, and then I needed to put this nullable in because if I didn't put the nullable in and you submitted the form with no data, Yup was throwing errors, it wasn't happy. So I put nullable in there um, to kind of make that go away. And down here, my email, it's email, it's a required field. Actually, to properly put this error message, it, 
this should be down here, emails are required field, and up here, this should say, this is not a valid email, because they're two different errors, right? So if I go like this and click create, oh, actually, uh, I can turn this validation off. But this is kind of beyond the scope of this that I haven't really figured out. How do you do this? No. Let's just, um, can I do it at the top level? As I set the type email, can I go up here and just say, no validate is true? See if that works. So if I just leave this like that and I click create, I should get this different error message back. I should get this, this is not a valid email. Let's see, create. Right, so I'm getting that this is not a valid email versus if I take it out and I click create, I'm getting emails required field. So what you can do with the up, you can kind of specify the error message based on what the specific situation is. So I did it for my name, I've done it for my email, so I have the the check for if it's valid email, I also have a check for it's required, and then I do it for my description. I can also do a length and all this other stuff here, but I'm not. And then what I'm also doing here, which is helpful, is I'm automatically creating, putting a created on date here when the validation is done, because I'm then gonna take the results of the validation and pass it to actually create my object, all right? So we've now defined our schema here, and then down here, I call this validate function, where I pass in the object. Actually, this is, let me, let me clean this up. This is not clear. Let's call this form JSON. All right, that, that, that seemed clear. Yeah, let's call it form JSON. So it's something that's clear. And then we're going to validate this form JSON. And then you set this flag abort early to false. Otherwise, Yup, will cancel validation as soon as it finds the error. I want it to validate all of my fields and then just give me back this object that has all the error messages in it. Let me move this over so we can get it all in one line. So what this um, validate function will do, will take this object and then it will validate it. If it's successful, it will give me back the object that was successfully created, um, which is what I want. And so I return it. Otherwise, if it's not successful, it'll throw an error. And then I need to kind of um, transform the um, yup result set into my key value pair with my field name and error message and that's what this get validation errors function does and so if you come to get validation what it's doing is inside of the error object yup passes there's an inner property and inside the inner property you can loop through and get based on the error path the error message and the error path is actually the name of the field and so that's what I'm doing so I'm creating this object that you'll see at the bottom so when I click create this uh, let's move this over here let's bring it all the way over this is the result of the get validation error so that's what's happening here so let's move that back and then as you can see I'm returning get validation error here and then that's what's getting thrown and then when the exception gets thrown so if we come back down here um, if this if this validate form throws an exception, it falls down into my catch and I return as my action data the errors. So that's what's happening. If, if no error happened, then I come to my new project. My new project calls this method called add project. And if we take a look at add project, it's really doing nothing. All it's doing is it's, it's faking a, um, a synchronous function. It's taking all the data. It's returning it along with a new ID that's associated with it. Where is it? And then this redirect is sending me to this new, sending me to a new page, and kind of just so you can see how that's being done. Um, let's go over here. So my new page is this. Oh, what's the best way to explain it? So my new route is projects. Um, and I want to just go to the page. It's going to render uh, information about a specific project. And I want the, what's the, I want the param to be called project ID. So this is how I do it. I create this folder called projects 
and then I create a file with the dollar sign project ID and then let's go to that file so where's my projects there we go and so what I can do now is as part of my params I can kind of pull out my project ID and then I can add that as my loader in my loader function so when the page loads I will get as you can see my, my use loader data I'm getting a project ID back and so I can render sorry so I can render a project ID on my page and so let's do that so you can see I'm I'm going to my new page it's kind of hard to see up here in the top but you can see that it's got the project ID and that has a project ID that's being rendered here so you know I successfully form is validated and moved on to the next thing but let's let me go back and make sure I explain the error data how the error data is being rendered so we just saw the success path but on the error path I'm returning my errors as part of my action data so if I come down here and I get my action data back my action data will have my errors in it and then first of all down at the bottom so let's do one of those examples again so you can see it so let's go home add item create the first thing that you'll notice that I'm doing is on my action errors I'm wrapping the border of any uh, anything that has an error I can look at the action data object and if it has the errors field in it then look for the key name description and if that exists then modify the style and create the data and then the thing below it is also the um, each key has a value and the value associated with it, with it is the error message and so that's how I'm getting the error message displayed here across the bottom and uh, is it one, uh, let me do this oh no I don't need to do that because you can see on the bottom this is the data that's coming back let me move myself again um, this key value pair and that's how I'm kind of laying this out so that's the basics of how to do form validation but then I tried to mix it up a little bit by using um, this cool library called Yup. As I said, I will post all of this code in the project. I'll probably try to move it over into, I think it's Code Sandbox they recommended using. So I'll probably try to move the project over to Code Sandbox with a link back to um, this video so you can kind of use the two together. Hopefully you found this helpful. Um, once again, if you did, please make sure you like, subscribe. Also, please share this content with others that you think you might, might find it useful. I think uh, Remix is pretty interesting. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to use it on an upcoming project. And my company clearly innovative. Um, thanks again, and you know, happy new year. I think this is my first video of the new year. Take care. Bye now.